Welcome to the Debunking Economics Podcast. Today, Australians can no longer turn to Facebook for news, and the Australian government isn't very happy about it. Facebook actions were unnecessary. Sanctions. They were heavy-handed, and they will damage its reputation here in Australia. Of course, it is largely the Australian government's fault. They want publishers to be able to charge Facebook when links are published to news content on other sites, even though those links drive traffic to those news sites. Why should Facebook pay for that? Today, we look at the broader question of who does pay for journalism. What is the model that will ensure that too much power doesn't stay in one place? And Steve has an idea on that. I'm not sure I entirely agree with him, though, so you'll have to decide. This week on the Debunking Economics Podcast with Steve Keen, I'm Phil Dobby. But what today's events do confirm for all Australians is the immense market power of these media digital giants. These digital giants loom very, very large in our economy and on the digital landscape. That is the Australian Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, castigating Facebook for daring to block access to Australian news sites from their platform. For Australians wanting to access any news content from Facebook or from Facebook users the world over wanting to access Australian news content. So if you want to discuss a story on Facebook with your friends and you'd normally post a link to a news page like in the Sydney Morning Herald, well, you can't do that now because the Australian government... With the support of the Murdoch Press, it's fair to say, want Facebook to pay for these links. It seems Australians are divided on the issue on Twitter and on Facebook. It does look like Facebook generally are seen as being the bad guys, though not the government, which I find a bit strange. But there are two stories here. One is who ultimately pays for news. And also the second story, the power of social media and the fact that Facebook can just turn all this off has shown that the power they have, that they can yield. Facebook has uh, unfriended Australia in other words. Although you can, of course, still post pictures of cats and puppies and what you had for dinner last night. So Facebook's back to its original uh, look and feel. So, Steve, surely Facebook is in the right here, aren't they? I mean, why should they pay for a link to a newspaper? If, if it's a link that I, as a Facebook user, has chosen to share with my friends, it's just me sharing information, isn't it? Why should Facebook pay for that? Yeah, well, it is, but the problem for the newspapers, it's their, their bloody fault. And that is because they've actually not worked out a way to make money out of that link unless you sign up to their subscription service. So, like, I, I, I regularly read Bloomberg, for example. I read the Sydney Morning Herald, New York Times, Guardian, blah, blah, blah. And then for three of those, I actually pay. So, I pay, and I know I'm going to get some complaints from left-wingers and right-wingers about paying for the Guardian, but I put in five five quid a month for The Guardian, about $5 a a month for Sydney Morning Herald and about the same for The New York Times. And that's my own personal contribution to journalism because I sincerely believe we need a decent um, basis in journalism and we certainly haven't got it today. Mm. But what we should be going on is um, there should be either a micropayment system. So if you get linked from... Um, you know, Facebook and you get sent to a, a page in um, uh, the, the Scottish Independent, then if you read the article, there should be a micropayment to the Scottish Independent, which they should have organised themselves somehow, and they never have. Mm. And it, it's the failure of the, of the uh, media uh, giants in general. Well, it's because they're all acting the independently, sensible. isn't it? That's the, that's the yeah. problem. So they all want to have yeah. their own subscription method. And I'm with you. So I, I, I pay to, I don't know, th- four or five. Of course, I'm more ensconced in the media than you are. So I've got to be mm-hmm. across it all. So I subscribe to four or five papers. And even that's not enough. It annoys me that I might have to subscribe to, a, to another couple. It cost me an absolute fortune to subscribe to all of these. Mm. But uh, if there was, uh, and so fairly often when I see a link, I get through because I'm already a subscriber to that to that newspaper. But sometimes, like, and I don't subscribe to news uh, publications in in Australia. So if I get a link to the Australian, often I can't see it. Um, whereas That's an advantage, isn't it? <laughs> it is a big advantage these days, absolutely. But I mean, uh, but so your point is, well, actually, if they were smart, I would have subscribed to some sort of system that would say. Eva, I'm going to look at a page. I just pay for that page, irrespective of the, if, if that publisher is a m- member of this group of newspapers uh, and I've agreed to that, then I just pay on a page basis. Is that what you, that's, that's your thinking? Something of that nature. I mean, I, like I've, I've been involved in various schemes trying to bring about some sort of micropayment system for media over the last 
20 or 30 years. And the only one that I've uh, continued with is a, a system called Inkle, I-N-K-L. Uh, so I pay 15 bucks a month for Inkle as well. And that, that aggregates about 40 or 50 newspapers, but it packages it itself in its own its own system. You can get straight access to, say, for example, the New York Times through that, um, some other sites as well. Mm. But a lot of them you've just got to choose, except what Inkle then does the aggregation around. Now, what I'd rather have, and this brings us down to the whole philosophical issue, which has been totally stuffed up here, uh, should this be a, a public utility or should it be private? Okay. Now, what we're getting uh, with this crazy system here where Facebook wants to keep itself um, private and the newspapers themselves want to keep themselves private. So, bang, what do we get? This crazy ban by the Australian government followed by a ban by Facebook on the crazy Australian government. What instead, if we had a you know, something like what the BBC does so badly, you know, you pay your licence fee to be able to watch the BBC, which uh, I, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I was getting more and more aggravated about that when I was in the UK. But it applied to every last media group. So you uh, paid a, a, a certain amount of, you know, a trivial amount of money per story, maybe something approximating the BBC licence fee per year in total. And then when you clicked on a particular link and then went and read it, the amount of time you spent reading it reading it was the, the, determined the proportion of your total money that went to that particular hmm. journalist. No, all oh, right. We again. can actually we yeah. can actually cite not your media group as well. I mean, there is the, the the role I see for, for newspapers is bringing together a sensible group of journalists to work in in a, a cohesive way on a range of issues and bring a flavour to a particular media outlet or. Uh, you know, a real focus, like a research team working together on something, you know, I don't know, like like, like a random break into the hotel, let's call it Watergate. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you need that service that journalism and newspapers provide. Mm. Uh, but the way to go about it now, given the fact that we now are reading news off the entire planet and... And 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 you and you don't subscribe. You're not reading one newspaper. You're reading a hundred or hundred and fifty over a month. Uh, is to have it as a public service, not a private system. But how would that work? You have to pay. You, you have to pay. If, like in, in the UK, if you want to watch the BBC, mm. and God knows why, except Richard Attenborough, you want to watch the BBC. Um, Richard, you've got you got to pay. How much? How much do you pay for the BBC? Richard in Attenborough the don't UK? Don't want to. Oh, an extortionate amount of money. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, it is for, an extortionate yeah, amount. Of money. <clears throat> increasingly, it's not value for money. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, yeah. we're all, we're all paying instead, for stuff we don't watch. Yeah, but if instead that amount of money was something you paid to accept media in a particular country, hmm. uh, and then that then also meant it was media wherever you happen to read this stuff. So you might put, let's say, let's say, I mean, to take a, let's say a quid a month, a, a quid a quid a week, so fifty quid, hundred US dollars, that sort of level. You pay that um, as as part of your um, you know license fee for media access in general, uh, and then that money uh, was the amount that you that you um, uh, consume of your hundred, yeah. the yeah. amount of money would go to different media groups and different journals, right, right. which what, would depend upon- Why does it have to be provided yeah. on a public basis? Why don't? Why, why wouldn't it just be smarter? Well, look, look what's happening with doing it on a private basis. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I get it because- okay, news, that's because, my point. Because newspapers aren't talking to each other. I mean, if, if, the, if, news, right. if newspapers yeah. agreed, if there was a system, somebody like, and here's an opportunity really, isn't it, for, for an entrepreneur somewhere in, in the midst of all of this to say- Okay, if you, you you pay a certain amount, whether it's five five pounds a month, ten pounds a month, twenty pounds a month, or whatever, and within that you get access to uh, a certain number of pages, and obviously it gets it's the, the the aggregate increase. You know the way pricing for stuff works. You pay a little bit more, you get a lot more. So you'd increase the number of pages you can you can access just by paying a few quid more on top of a you know, on top of the plan you, you're currently on. So you you know it's, it can be a commercial model in that it's always trying to upgrade you to consume more. And then that consumption is shared amongst the, uh, the the various pages that you visit, and the uh, the success of this would be based on the number of of, of partners uh, that you you draw into this. The danger is, of course, they're going to say, which is what's happening now, which is probably why this has not happened. Well, no, we want exclusivity. We want our readers to stick with us and not be uh, spreading themselves around various publications. That's 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 well, the what trouble we're competing is against. Ro- do better journalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the irony I find about this is that the people who are the most, you know, prolific advocates of a free market system, and uh, mm. the person I'm thinking first name starts with R, I think it's, mm. is, is, it, is, it, is, it, 
is it R- Roger? Roger, 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 Roger Moffin. No, Roger Moffin. No. Roger Moffin. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, Ruffet, R- R- it's Roger Australian. Muffet. Think of Ruse. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Rue Muffet. Okay, Rue. So Rue Muffet. Oh, I thought you were thinking uh, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Murdoch. Oh, that's he's the in Murdoch, is it? Okay. <laughs> it was since I read one of his papers. Um, uh, but, you know, Rupert wants us to stick all the stuff with private and its rival with other groups and takeovers and all this yeah. animosity. And you know the level of hostility in the media to other media groups. Um, uh, in Australia, and, particularly, yeah. And, and yet they, they, they've they got a system uh, which completely fails. And consequently, you know, if you remember the Sydney Morning Herald from the Saturday Sydney Morning Herald, uh, from 30 years ago, you needed a truck to bring it inside your house because it weighed so much. There mm. were, you know, seven sections and et cetera, et cetera. And now it's down to something which actually floats in through the window. It's so light. <laughs> so they've been on a, on a losing wicket for the last 30 years and they still haven't got to the stage now of, of, a, of a successful um, campaign. And what I see with people's responses to media these days, like the fact that I happily go on Russia Today, for example, I'm seen as being a Putin puppet because I do that. Um, no, uh, <laughs> Russia Today has vacuumed up many of the high-quality journalists who got sacked by the media groups because they could no longer afford their salaries, and, and then they work as independent contractors, giving a level of legitimacy to Vlad, sure, but meaning you actually get the sort of calibre journalism out of Russia today that you don't get out of, for example, I don't know, the New York Times or... Well, that, uh, and that is because because it's state-funded. I mean, obviously, there's things that you can't talk about on Russia yeah. today, I suspect, but because it's yeah. state-funded, they haven't got the same commercial model. But look, with the, the, that's uh, the thing, yeah. The, the problem when yeah. you've got uh, the idea that, okay, well, if you pay a certain amount and then, um, you know, you, you just get... You, you pay per click per pay. Page. You're not getting over the big problem that, that we've got with the media in in, uh, in this day of social media is that it becomes a race for the clicks, and then that that isn't quality journalism. So Russia Today is doing okay because you're not having to worry about those clicks so much. Everyone else mm. is, and even if you had a, a system where you tried to drive micro payments, everyone would still be trying to maximise their micro payments by giving you headlines and stories that they know are going to get the most clicks, which are not necessarily what's best for society. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get away from that problem. And the same thing applied in the media itself, you know, news of the world and things like that, for mm. example. Yeah. You know, some new idea, or as, as, I, as I preferred it, satire in Australia was no, no, no idea. idea. I've got no idea, have you? Yeah. Um, you know, um, so it, you can't get away from that. And we might as well accept it's going to be part of any system. But we need to get something which still gets money to, towards you know, it makes it possible that quality journalism can survive because the death of quality journalism is why we have this obsession about Russia Today and, and other uh, national media groups because, as you say, they are the ones who have a business model that means they don't need to worry about the, the revenue stream. Well, let's just get just bring the two together and, and create a... Uh, uh, you can do it at a, at, a, at a domestic level as well, but a system that lets people pay a certain amount of, of money um, and as you said, there can be levels in it as well. And then their access to this aggregation system uh, means they can access the New York Times or the Times of London or the Hindustani Times or whatever else they find an interesting article in. And the payment they make by the click partially goes to the newspaper group and partially goes to the journalist. So what would you say for state broadcasters then, like the like the BBC, that they are, and you know, obviously they're publishing websites as well, maybe TV and video is a different thing, but maybe not. Maybe it's the, the same model applies. Uh, but but what about publishers like the BBC then? They would just be the, well, same, they, they as, they'd be up, the same as everybody else. They'd just be fighting except, for... Except, except that, you know, they wouldn't be putting up paywalls to their front page. I mean, you're still going to get newspaper groups wanting to have their own, you know, dedicated bunch of subscribers for the people just in their area. So because newspapers are, are a local phenomenon as well as covering global news, sometimes they'll want to have, you know, the City Morning Herald subscription group or The Age, uh, you know, New York Times, et cetera, et cetera, Bangkok Post. Um, and, and they'll have this, they, they can then go ahead with their paywalls mm. um, for, for direct access, but you can get the indirect access at a click per view, which partially supports the journalist and partially supports the media group. And I guess, you know, if we were interested in public broadcasting, you could say, well, OK, the government is going to, I mean, you'd, you'd whittle down the, the level of uh, content which is uh, supported by the government from the BBC so that they focus on market failure, the gaps that are commercially difficult to produce, like those David Attenborough documentaries, for example, and then say, well, okay, Mm. uh, we're going to help you to support, to produce those 
and uh, you'll issue those for free. You can do other stuff as well, like your more general news, for example, or other entertainment content. Uh, but you're in the same game as everybody else there. You're going to be on the pay-per-click or pay-per-view model. Uh, and and maybe they could the government could say, and to ensure that there's more of a level playing field, we are going to kick... I think that this is what you were saying before. We're going to kick-start those accounts. We'll give everyone £10 a month towards these clicks and plays, which could be for BBC content, or it could be for something produced by independent producers or by mainstream producers. It's, it's up to you what you watch, and the government's going to help you at the beginning of that, just to uh, jolly the industry along a little bit. To some degree. And and then that means you've got, uh, you know, a, a, I think we've seen that what misinformation does, and like it's not just, you know, obviously government's under, accused of misinformation. That's where the, the, Vlad effect, the Vlad effect comes up so frequently. But obviously the Murdoch media groups in the States have been responsible for immense misinformation. Mm. Ditto in Australia, uh, ditto in the UK. Um so you, you want you want to get to the stage where there's quality rather than misinformation is the rule. At the moment, misinformation dominates. Uh, this would be a, a way at least of <laughs> enabling a quality journalism that used to exist to some reasonable degree back in the 60s, 70s and 80s mm. to bring that back. So and what you're what saying miss. on this, you, this micropayment model, uh, it wouldn't apply to articles that what you don't agree with? <laughs> no, it would, would any, anything you read, you'd be paying for. Right, okay. 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 So it's how's just, it, it, how's it going to stop the misinformation then? So, 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 and you're right, Australia, Sky News in Australia is mm. abhorrent. It's as bad as any, it's as bad as Fox News, possibly worse, in that there are still climate change deniers occupying primetime TV there, talking about how it's all a load of hogwash. Uh, and similarly, you know, COVID deniers even, vaccine deniers. Mm. I mean, they're all there on uh, on Sky News Australia, and um, but I don't know as this this idea that you pay for uh, to to view and because you know, it could apply equally to TV as it does to the press, couldn't it? it could be saying, well, okay, you don't it's want to any see- media, any media whatsoever could be. It's just saying that the, the, this what we've got here is an attempt by the Australian government to force one private group to pay money to another private group yeah. to get around a public about act, a, a problem about access to information. But I don't know, it does, I don't know how it improves. I don't know how it improves the quality of journalism because you're still going down that pay per click road. In fact, it could potentially make it even worse. No, I, I think the pay per click um, at the mo- at the moment, yes, it's well. This is it's a calibre. The, the overall quality of what you can get's gone down in general. That's my main issue. Mm. I mean. If, if, if you go 30 years ago, I used to subscribe to The Australian. It had some damn good journalists inside yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and even The Daily Telegraph. I mean, one of my, uh, one of my best <laughs> friends uh, is, was, an, is an ex-Daily Telegraph journalist who got into the whole issue of debt deflation mm. and has remained a friend ever since and did some really high-quality stuff on The Sunday Telegraph. Um, so what I'm trying to do is strengthen the journalist against the media groups. Uh, because what we've got now is is the media groups become playthings of the moguls, and of course the most obvious mogul is Rupert Murdoch, and that's a large part of why I think this whole thing has come about in the first place in Australia. Yeah, for sure, his, yeah, dominance yeah. over the Liberal Party there, yeah, uh, and and the fear and the and the, fa- and the cowardice of the Labor Party in confronting Murdoch, which is another issue, I'm sure. Um, so we're getting the worst of both worlds: one private group being forced to work with another private group by the government. Why not? Just establish access to information as a as a public utility in the same sense that you know power should be a public utility. Hello, Texas, um, and and mm. we then the way in a sense it is actually like an electronics electrical supplier model in that sense. Some of the living out some of the worst aspects that has been done in the electricity market, but you would. Your, your, you would hopefully have some media groups trying to attract you by quality research. Yeah, back to back to the eighties, effectively. So, uh, that's the future. There was a, uh, and maybe the idea of publicly funding some journalists. I'm not. I'm trying to think this through. But when I, my short spell at working for the BBC, I was amazed. Uh, and it seems such a it, it really didn't work. But the BBC was trying to improve local journalism, not just on radio, but they also the BBC was paying for local journalists in local newspapers as well. In other words, they were subsidized. It seemed to, at, the, at the time because this, I saw the stories that were coming out, which were absolutely hopeless. Uh, it seemed like a complete waste of, of uh, 
taxpayers or uh, uh, the people paying for TV licenses to also be paying for journalists outside the BBC. It just seemed nuts. But mm. maybe there's an idea that rather than just putting all the money into the BBC, the government actually did say, well, OK, let's also have a, a journalist fund for journalism that is just not commercially viable, uh, but is worthwhile. And uh, and we will help to uh, so that, for example, you didn't pay per click for that content. And, uh, you know, maybe there are algorithms to try and help. So if there are things that uh, maybe this is dangerous because then you get the government involved in choosing the news agenda. But maybe there's uh, maybe that beyond the commercial model. I'm, I'm just trying to find out if there's a way beyond if we if we if we're using online for good rather than for evil, there's a way that you can help promote content that needs discussion like your stuff, for example. I mean, this podcast would benefit, I think, if we had 10 times the audience and we uh, we wouldn't be doing that for the money. We, we might improve just, our quality, you mean? Yeah, we might, <laughs> we might actually get better at it if we knew more people were listening. But also, you know, just the discussions that we have on this podcast, I think, are often very good. Well, in fact, always very good for society. <laughs> Always. Always very good for Fair society. Enough. And, uh, you know, and we would benefit from a bigger audience and more people understanding what we're talking about. Rather but than having have, to have a $10 per month paywall ourselves. For which we have to do to try and uh, make ends meet for both of us. And, so, so and, and thank you to the subscribers we, we have. We do absolutely. that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. we'd rather you didn't and we had a much bigger audience. And I'm sure you would rather that was the case as well. But the commercial reality is we can't afford to do that because, because uh, you know, we have to eat. Basically, you've got to research and pay for researchers, and I've got to put mm. uh, food on my kids' table. So I hope you and we come we come back to the <laughs> that's why you're paying regarding in, in access to information as a utility in the same sense the roads are a utility. Mm. Um, and and so what we but you know, mm. the, the, model, the model partially is, is the idea of having you the government pays for the roads. Um, the the cars on the road are effectively your choice of which media group to listen to. And you have a combined system like that where the state provides the infrastructure uh, for access to information. And then the information you access depends upon your own interests. And those interests then determine how much money goes to the different organisations. Right. But underneath all of that, when they're providing the infrastructure, you've got an algorithm there. So you're saying the state controls the algorithm. And that's a really dangerous thing, isn't it? Well, I mean, publish the algorithm. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing, I mean, I'm no great fan of Bitcoin, as you know, uh, in terms of it being a system of money. Forget that. It's a great speculative vehicle. Mm. Uh, but the whole idea about a public ledger is is part of what Bitcoin has shown. And so in the same sense, if you, I mean, for example, let's go to, a, being very domestic here, mentioning a lot of Australian examples, but the, the, the total rorts over the um, um, <clears throat> Uh, government funds for bushfire relief and government funds for sporting facilities where almost all the money goes to Liberal Party um, seats for both. I mean, the Blue Mountains, I mean, most people around the world would know that would have an idea what the Blue Mountains means in, in New South Wales, mm. almost burnt to a crisp and yep. got virtually no money because it's a Labor electorate. Um, so you publish the stuff. And again, it's possible to have bureaucratic standards that get in in the way of biases like that. Um, again, again, the Australian electoral again back to Australia again. The electoral commission in Australia, the similar thing in New Zealand. Um, these systems uh, with with the set of rules where the bureaucrats are applying them on sound gro- grounds mean that you get a, you know, a far better electoral system in Australia than America, for example. Um, you, you can put up rules like this that work, even though it's a public institution. And, and pay Macy, making these things visible and something you can complain about to an ombudsman, in that they're necessary, then I think that might limit uh, any dangers of state control. Mm. Well, you've got an ombudsman like uh, the you know the, the the various press controls, the press ombudsman doesn't work very well in any country really you know no, um no. it's uh because it because it is you know your word against theirs there's always a counter argument but administrative for ombudsmen work quite well mm. having had personal experience with them yeah so, but but media uh, is more because it's a you know it, there's news versus opinion and the divide is so I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking more about if you're able to show there's an obvious bias and how the money's been allocated mm. uh you know to, to if, you, if you had an incredibly um distortion between the distribution of, of votes for particular political parties, say Republican versus Democrat in America, and the money going for the media system, where it's Republican leaning versus Democratic leaning, then you can use one as an indicator of bias in the other. And of course, at the moment, I mean, the, the United States media is so heavily dominated 
by the Murdoch uh, end of the spectrum that obviously you'd find massive, you know, the, the private money is massively going towards the, the Rupert end of the spectrum and, and not towards the Bernie end of the spectrum. Mm. So you, 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 have, you have ways to, to, to give a metric on whether this is being used for state control or for particular p- political party benefit or not. But it's certainly going to be better than what we're getting right now, where people in Australia can't even click on a link to the local newspaper yeah, and is, send but, it to a friend. Uh, yeah, no, but that is a different, that, that, that is a, a different issue, isn't it, really? Look, what, what is happening there and the reason why you can't share an article on Facebook, and, and Facebook are quite right on this, this is because of this legislation that they're trying to introduce in Australia that says if social media links, provides a link, to a newspaper article, social media should pay for that link. And Facebook is saying, what? So if somebody wants to share an article in the Sydney Morning Herald and wants to discuss it on Facebook, which is what the Facebook platform is is all about, it's all about discussion and sharing ideas, we should pay the Sydney Morning Herald because people are clicking through to go to their site? Forget that. And this obviously is, uh, which is different to, for example, if you are a uh, social media platform like Google that might have a Google News page where you aggregate content uh, and and people are, uh, are going to that page rather than going to the newspaper because they're seeing enough of that content, uh, then, that's, then that is getting free content. They're two very different stories, aren't they? So Facebook, quite right. They're saying, well, no, we're not going to play this game. Google are... Yep. Google are yeah. in negotiations. I wonder whether Google will turn back now and say, well, now Facebook's done that. Yeah, forget forget our negotiations. We're going to take you on too. And and I don't know how the Australian government comes out. How, how do they back out of this? I mean, they're playing the... Uh they're playing it tough and saying, uh, how dare you? But um, ultimately... I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll just continue. In, in Australia, you just can't access content through Facebook. And, um, but it's... A, it's the, the whole reason behind it, as you're saying, is that Murdoch is such a dominant force there, he wants to get some extra money. This through, and, he, and, his, and his money would go to Murdoch, not to the journalists who work for Murdoch. Again, this is the other thing that I don't like about this model, mm. uh, that it, the cash goes directly to the, you know, the, to the company, whereas we have a model where there was a, you know, a, a public access to media anywhere in the world paid for partially by the, the governments themselves, partially by a fee paid by private individuals, uh, then when, when you clicked on, the money would go partially to the journalists, partially to the news organisation. Um, you would you would have, a, I think, a more effective financing system. You get more money for the for the media, hopefully be able to finance decent journalism once more. Whereas at the, the moment, this is just, it's just showing you they're using the wrong philosophy. They can't get their heads out of everything has to be privatised. Mm. And uh, like also, like this, this whole, it, it, one, one particular thing about Australia, uh, is the dominance of neoclassical thought in its government policy. And this thing called the uh, what's called the Australian Competition and uh, Cons- Consumer Commission, ACCC, yeah. whatever they call yeah. themselves these days. Okay. They believe everything should be like a, a, um, a competitive market. And the thing is, when you get things like search engines or social media pages like Facebook, there's an incredible network effect. It's, it's the classic is, example of the network effect is the telephone. One telephone is not particularly useful. You need at least two. Yeah. And then the more people who use them, the more useful there are. So ultimately, we all end up on one network. Yeah. If you had uh, 20 different had, Facebooks, it wouldn't work because you'd be saying, which Facebook yeah, exactly. are you on? Oh, I'm on Facebook 18. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm on yeah. 17. We can't talk. Yeah, exactly. You That's right. To, yeah. You, yeah. yeah, so you need something which is a which is a global scheme, and in that case, I'm sorry, you've got to you've got to think in terms of a, either a government institution or a commercial entity where where all the players are part of that commercial entity, mm. a cooperative of some sort, and then you have the uh, then you then you have your payment system sitting on top of the either cooperative you know, it'd be a, I mean, a cooperative slash government scheme. The advantage of the government scheme to some extent is wherever you go from click to click, like, you know, we wouldn't need to subscribe to find ourselves getting revenue from the system. If you have to have a a, a collective system yeah. that actually slows but my it down concern, to some degree. But my concern is, and and you know how it is, you know how the game works. I you can double or quadruple the audience for an article with the headline. Uh, the more sensational you make it, the more you're going to drive an audience. And look, stick a question mark at the end of something. So if you, um, uh, you know, you could, the, if you were to publish an article saying the world is going to end in five days, then obviously that is purely false. If you were to publish an article saying 
is the world going to end in four, five days? Question mark. Uh, and then you you publish an article that says, no, actually, there's no reason to suggest that. In fact, the, the world is going to survive for another 10 billion years or whatever it might be. Uh, the fact that you've turned that headline around means you're going to get more clicks because people go, oh, what? The world's going to end in five days? I need to read this. Uh, and that's the way it works. Just stick a question mark around and, t- and t- t- turn the proposition around. And you get an audience, and that's that's. Are you sure? That, that's yeah. It's a trick of the game. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the same at the same time, how long do you spend on that page once you realise you've been conned? Yeah. The trouble is, we've got there's so much you know fake news. People are actually enjoying being conned these days. The whole Q and on nonsense. And it gets shared. In the last, yeah. yeah. And the problem uh, is, people share it without looking at it as well. You know. Yeah. But if, but if yeah. <laughs> but if you can, the reason you don't look at it is you've got a paywall stopping you looking at the newspaper article. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So if you if you get you get rid of the paywall syndrome. Yeah. Uh, but my concern, my it, concern is, and I, mm. I hear where you're going, but my concern is, and maybe that's a bit of an extreme example, but you've got in the the beauty of uh, journalists working for a newspaper is that, uh, and this might be an old fashioned view, that that journalist uh, knows that. They've got their their pay assured at least for the next week, and they know mm. that they can concentrate on delving into stories. If you are if you if you're going down a where everyone's independent, it's a pay per click model. Then really your skill isn't in journalism in terms of unearthing a story. It really is uh, a skill in terms of how do you maximise the click audience, which then gets down know, to things I'm, like I'm, keyword I want, I want to have going both. The, I want to have money going both to the journalist and the and the newspaper. Right. Okay. Not not just one or the other, but but. Uh, but I see, like for example, Michael West has established a very good service. You know, being kicked off the Sydney Morning Herald, he's now got his own uh, daily uh, uh, daily newsletter. Um, so you do have people who get driven out, and they can still survive. But I'm fundamentally thinking of trying to rebuild the newspapers of the '80s and uh, well, the '70s and '80s, when you had quality journalism, uh, such as which gave us the, the Watergate discovery and so on, uh, such as gave us the Pentagon Papers so on and so forth, and, and enormous exposés of government wrongdoing as well as, um, uh, you know, the, the local you know, news stories, trying to rebuild that, get their revenue model up and strengthen, in that case, the journalists as part of it. Because you know, if you go back again, as my experience with the Australian newspaper in the, in the 70s and 80s, you had some calibre journalists there who weren't completely uh, kowtowed and, 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 and awed by Murdoch. They could write their own thing. Now, as the revenue has fallen, the, the power of the media miracles has actually risen. And these people are, and that, that's why people have got the negative attitude towards, you know, some of the other state broadcasters. Um, it, it, it's the worst of both worlds. And this is, this is pushing us further down that same failed philosophy of privatise everything. Mm. Let's make the access public. And then the private the provider providers compete on that and hope that in so doing you, you get the revenue stream that lets us rebuild decent journalism. Yeah. All right. Well look, I'm I'm not quite sure how we're going to promote this. I'm wondering whether which headline are we going to use on this? So I've got uh, Steve Keane discusses the implications of the Facebook ban. That's uh, that could be one. Uh, we might get a few people uh-huh. clicking on that. Facebook uh-huh. ban marks the death knell of journalism. Question get, mark? Well, yeah, no, just the exclamation mark, I think, on that. Okay, uh, all right, uh, okay. Yeah, or journalism is dead. The Australian government killed it. Uh, which one is would get the most people listening in, do you reckon? Well, I wanted to try three and see which one works out. <laughs> <laughs> To a but click analysis. My point, though, you know, you know the last. I know, I know. The last it, two, it you know, yeah, more people listening than the first one. That and that's the. It, it, yeah. That, it, that, yeah. That, that, that is the problem that we're still not we're, we're still not overcoming, and that and that that, yeah. that is because that is human behaviour. How do you fight hum? How can you fight human behaviour so that they for for the good of humanity? Uh, so maybe that's the headline. <laughs> I don't know how we sort this out, Steve, but it is going to be very interesting to watch what the hell happens in this battle between uh, the Australian government and Facebook. I, I mean, you would have thought. I mean, it's Facebook it's Facebook are not going to step back on this, and the Australian government are not going to step back on this. Uh, it, so mm, is yeah. it just going to be the case that now, from now on, if you want to discuss anything that's going on in the world and you're in Australia, you can't do it on Facebook anymore? Maybe the, the mm. Greens apparently suggested. On, by the way, just as a final point on this, because we because what yeah. we haven't talked about is is how it relates to Google, who are trying to find a, a middle line with the with the Australian government. Because Google were mm. of course saying, "Well, we're just going to pull out of Australia." 
completely. Uh, and then yeah. the government, so the, to which the Australian government said, well, that's fine, we'll all just go and use Bing. So why would that be any different? Because Bing also aggregate news in the same way that, uh, that, that Google does and also, you know, provide their search engine, not as effective. Uh, mm. Why, you know, why would you take that, that step? So the Greens then said, well, perhaps the government could provide its own search engine. What do you think of that idea? Mm. <laughs> Just for well. Australia, Dev- devised by the government. Uh, anybody who's, I think, uh, you know, in, 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 philosophically, there might be an argument for it, but anyone who's tried to navigate the Australian tax office website will know the idea that the uh, uh, the government does anything online is going to be a disaster. Yeah, and equal the UK's uh, wrong, uh, mm. vaccine, vaccination and uh, uh, COVID controls, another instance of that. Yeah, um, I, I agree. But we, what I'm saying is we, we have to... We, the, I think the only way out of this impasse is not the way Australia and Facebook and Google are fighting, but something that treats the actual access to news as a public utility. Yeah, yeah. Agreed on that. All right. Very good. Uh, lively discussion. Good to talk, Steve. Catch you soon. Okay. Okay, Matt. Bye. Now, next time, consumers in the UK paid off £16.6 billion in debt last year. That will have contributed significantly to the slowdown in the economy. So as though that money comes out of bank accounts, is the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey right that the economy is like a coiled spring ready to bounce back? Or is he being overly optimistic? We'll look at that next week on the Debunking Economics podcast with Professor Steve Keen. I'm Phil Dobby. I'll see you then.